Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. At this step, the next step on that. Uh, Is everybody? Uh, where is the board? Here. Come okay. Around. All right. Okay. When, so we, when I first started doing this, yeah. Sorry. What, aside from impedance issues, but just for conserving chemicals, would it be better to tell the router make bat traces? In other words, etch minimum etching, maximum trace width. Yeah, and and in fact, on KiCad. You can put ground planes and VCC planes and all of that. You can actually do flood, that. Flood the area. You can flood the area. Okay. Okay, you can do that. And uh, uh, now, I, I, the easy way to get the toner off is with acetone. You just swipe it and it'll come right off. So now, back to with the iron, if you, did, if you screwed up and you want to clean the copper off again. Yeah, you would just, just if, if this pattern had been incomplete, I yeah. would have just wiped it with acetone. Now, and because we were doing it straight, <coughs> I would have used one that was already successfully patterned so we could have moved on. Uh, but one of the things that I found that I'm not sure how to really solve yet, this board is clean right now, except for the where the... And when I clean it with the acetone, the acetone will come off, but sometimes the, it, you'll get a little toner stain in the clear areas, okay? And it would be nice if you didn't have to do that. Uh, let's see, there's the toner. What problems caused by leaving the toner on there? Well, that's it. well, it'd be hard to solder, but the there's a, actually a thought that I've thought about. Uh, you, one of the things that professional boards have is uh, an overcoat. Solder mask. Huh? An overcoat or solder mask? Uh, well, it could be a solder mask. It, solder mask might be being used for the overcoat, but they usually put some layer of, of green varnish or something. There's actually an overcoat on it. Now, uh, on those, uh, uh, you can buy that stuff from Fry's. You can buy a pen that you just like cover all your traces with. Uh, something that I'm experimenting with, I haven't been. It's a, this is from Michaels, and it's uh, their their gloss poly. Your thing, varnish, and want to try and see if that provides us an overcoat. And now we're not would apply that is after I solder all the pieces on there, and that way keep the copper from oxidizing. Oh yeah, because this copper, even though it's bright now, will oxidize, and, and in a year it'll look pretty nasty. In fact, you could see that a little bit on that uh, that one that was a 28 pin package. If you looked at it, you said, "Oh, that copper looks a little grody." Well, that's because it's been not protected for a long time. All right. Okay. Have you tried any of that pin plating? No, I haven't. I've tried to get it, but I haven't. Here. There, there's the board. All right. At that step, you would go, you would uh, drill it. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next foil. Okay, drill sizes. All right, this is a chart or a partial chart of drill sizes from down to a, uh, from 0.1 millimeter up to four millimeters. Now, I have circled here in green the two drills that I typically use. Okay, and like I say here, it's so you don't have to do a lot of drill changing. Uh, you know, I. I I try to use a small drill as much as where it makes sense, but the component will fit in it. And that, because that gives me more copper around the pad. And then I use the large one where I either have large pads or I need the larger hole to, to drill. Okay, now, um, I found out something. I buy these things from eBay. You know, and you can usually buy about 10 drills for, oh, uh, three or four dollars. 
uh, that's shipping free, you know, I just find them. Well, it turns out I found out that you get 20 drills if you buy the metric sizes. So I'm now buying metric sizes, and the ones that I'm currently using are the uh, 0.7 and the 0.9, though probably the 1 would have been a more realistic size to use, so that's what I did. Uh, in this board, the actual switch is uh, pretty much a standard switch. It's set on uh, 200 mil centers with uh, 60 mil, uh, 60 mil leads, and that that'll drive you up to a sixteenth of an inch. You use steel or carbon? Steel. Uh, I, I don't do enough of it, Will. To now, but I have now. This comes to the next thing I was. Kind of wanted to show. Okay, here's one. On this board, when you look at it, you'll notice there's a dimple. And that was drilled from the copper side down. And when you pull it out, the, there's a little dimple at each spot. This was drilled with a Dremel, uh, a Dremel tool mounted in a Dremel drill. <coughs> Drill press, right, thank you. And it was run on a high speed. And the, the, the drill bits that I'm getting are causing this problem. And I'm not sure, I don't like it, okay? But I, I have solved my problem by going, I went to CDC surplus and I bought a zero, zero drill sized chuck that fits my my drill press at home where I run it at a slow speed and that seems to be fine. But here you can see if anybody has a solution to this dimpling problem, I would you're love to that, hear that it. So you using this regular really drill bit or speed? using PC drill bit? As well, and it, well, here, look at this. Okay, on this one, on this one, the small holes, because I didn't have, couldn't do the small ones, the 72s on the drill press are done with uh, the, the Dremel tool, and the large ones are done with the uh, um, drill press. And you see the difference in the holes yeah. that one. And so, right, for me, my solution was to use the drill press, and, and so, but I'm not sure why that occurs, and I don't know the answer to that problem yet. Uh, also, I noticed that CDC surplus, they have PCB drills, little tiny drills with yeah. the, like, was the eighth inch shank or whatever it is. Um, and those seem to work really well for me. Yeah, they, they probably, work, that might be the answer. CDC surplus, it's on Beltline Road, just yeah. west of, what is it? Uh, it's Alex. by the American Legion over there. Yeah. Uh, where there's a there's a big uh, garden shop there, what's the name of it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's on the DPRD website, the address anyway, for okay. CDC surplus, under suppliers. Okay. Would it help if you could, you know, aside from the fact that you can't see what you're doing, but if you went in from the uh, press the other side of the board, would that well, you know, put less stress on the copper? Just thinking myself, it would seem like that would push the copper away. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, you know, but on a double-sided board, you're going to do that. You're going to be cut approaching one, one side or the other that way. So I really don't know if it makes any difference. The dimple from the high speed on the Dremel always occurred coming out. It when wasn't necessarily out, going in. What if you stop the drill? You drill it and then stop it and take it out. What is mm. that? It's too take too long. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, you going, just, just, you know, like I said, cutting the board was one issue that I had. The other one is drilling. There's a couple of boards here. If you look real close, you can see where I had 95 percent of them pretty good, but there was one or two that kind of went weird. And that's uh, so drilling the holes. I actually have to use special glasses that are like twice as powerful as these, so I can kind of like see what's going on and position lights. But a young person would have no problem, but I, I do. Okay, uh, so try to keep your drill counts down. These are good suggestions to starting place. If you only had one drill, get a, uh, I'd either get the nine millimeter or the one millimeter or the 62. Because you can always make the holes a little large. All right, okay. Now, uh, the, if I can get the, let's go to the next slide, what's next? Okay, 
And you guys have been asking about this. Um, okay, here is the lowdown on the local supplies that I know about um, uh, and prices as of yesterday. So. Yeah, I'm going to, I need to get the, all right, like I said, at this point, you're finished, it looks kind of homemade, for just a little more effort, you can really pop this up, and that's by putting the, this on, it's yep. very simple, you just uh, put it yeah. back on, yeah. <laughs> Just now like with the drill begins. holes in it, and this is where, and I'll leave this here if anybody's interested afterwards, they can look and, and you can line it up and you can see you can actually find where the holes should be. And once you've got where the holes should be, you just hold it, iron it like you did before. Now, there's one trick here, and you can use this, once you get finished with your toothbrush, remember it's a little more delicate because, uh, uh, well, you, you, to get all the white out, okay, the last trick you can do is you can wet a, 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 a sponge <coughs> with, that has a, like a scrub, scrub, scrub pad, ideally one that's been worn a little bit. And you can take that over, so now you've got your uh, transfer on the back. Like this, you know, you're looking kind of like this, but you have all those little white spots that you saw on that on the PC board. You've used you've used the the uh, toothbrush and the hot water, and you've still got some left. If you take this and very lightly, not you can not very abrasively, just I mean really lightly, go over it. And you can clean all of that stuff off, and uh, it'll look good. Okay. I mean, and this is what it looks like when you get finished. Okay, now, all right. Uh, trying to key, I know I probably went way over, I'm sorry guys. Uh, there's one thing, the two more slides I'd like to cover real quick. Okay, go uh, to the next one. All right, in the double spacing, the, the real key is getting the front aligned to the back, okay? now. Often you'll do four alignment holes in the corner, all right? If you do that, uh, I don't think you, it makes it, it's a little too hard for you to do a really good alignment. So what I would suggest, uh, first of all, when you drill your holes, drill small holes. And then look into the internal part of the circuit where you have larger pads and drill a small hole so that you can make as many reference points that when you hold it up to the light or align the second side, you have more than just the four corners. You want to have some interior to, that you can align to. All right, and once you've got that, you can iron it back down. Now, if you're really paranoid about undercut in the holes, which I haven't found to be a problem, but if you are, you then take nail polish, and cover up the holes on both sides before you dump it in the edge. Okay? All right? But what you want to do is you want the holes, you don't want to try to align the front to the back uh, with just four holes in the corner. You want to put as many, you know, I wouldn't drill my most critical hole, but I would drill the holes that are not that critical so I have maybe 10 or 15 reference points. Okay? You're talking about drilling in the paper copy, right? No. No, no, no. no I'm talking about drilling. Drill. I put, first I put the one pattern on. Okay? And I remove it and I inspect it. Then I drill my alignment holes. You haven't actually. Oh, okay. okay. Then I clean the board, uh, the other side of the board. Then I align the copper pattern. Then I use the iron to transfer, actually these probably should be back, changed, transfer, and then I remove, so at this point, now I have a pattern <coughs> on both sides, and I can look at that time to see if where the holes, the holes are where they're supposed <coughs> to be. All right, then I etch it. Okay, now, 
then I go ahead and drill the rest of the holes, and then I'll, I will continue to put the silk screen on the front part. Okay. Now, the last one that I want to talk about is making mock videos. And if we'll pop to the next foil, and if you can click on that link. Oh, actually, I think you have to do it in presentation mode. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, who wrote that? Oh, we don't have any speakers. Uh, I'll turn the volume up as much as I can on my PC. Thought I had everything. Thought about everything. But I didn't think of anything. <laughs> okay, this side here—it's not an original idea on my so part. Here we have a uh, homemade uh, PC board that has been made with the uh, toner transfer method. You can see. You don't want to be in full full screen. It will take too it will take too much resources. Oh. <laughs> 